Hello guys, um, so we're going to do um, another set of examples for finding the limit as x approaches some number. Alright, so in the first one, we want to find the limit as x approaches 1 for 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 all over x minus 1. Okay, so immediately what you should recognize is that 1 here is not in the domain of this function, right? When x is 1, this goes to 0. Which means that you need to um, factorize this somehow and see if this will cancel out the factor x minus 1. If it will cancel out and then you can find the limit. Alright? Now, notice that if you factorize the quadratic, this is easy. This time this is 2. So I need um, negative 1 and negative 2 to factorize that, right? So 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 is 2x squared, right? Minus 2x minus x plus 1. And so I can rewrite it as 2x into x minus 1. And then I have negative 1 out, x minus 1, right? So this can be factorized as x minus 1 into 2x minus 1, right? And then, so when you come here, this is equal to the limit as x approaches 1. So now this becomes x minus 1 into 2x minus 1 all over x minus 1. And so when you do that, you notice that you have x minus 1 and x minus 1 here. So these guys will cancel out and then the remaining function now is in the domain of um, x is equal to 1 is now in the domain of this remaining function 2x minus 1. And so it's easy to find the limit now. So now this is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of just 2x minus 1, right? It's 2x minus 1 over 1, but it's the same thing. And so now this is linear. You can just put x in that. And this will give you 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is equal to 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 of this is equal to 1. Okay? So always ensure that this number here is in the, is in the domain of this function. If not, then you have to manipulate this expression, try to get rid of this if, you, um, if possible, and then you can find the limit. Okay. Let's look at the second one. The second one we have um, we have x approaches five of okay. So in all of these we are applying the laws of limits, right? So number two, we want to find the limits as x approaches five of x plus one times the square root of x plus four. Okay, so it's a product. 5 here is in the domain of this x plus 1 as well as in the domain of this. So you can find the limit of this times the limit of that. So this can be written as the limit as x approaches 5 of x plus 1 multiplied by the limit as x approaches 5 of the square root of x plus 4. Right? And so this becomes, here we can plug 5 in here, 5 plus 1, and then multiply by, and this we can take 5, the limit inside the square root, we've seen this before. So this is square root of the limit as x goes to 5. So this is 5 plus 4, right? So this gives us, now this is 6, multiplied by, multiplied by the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3, so 6 multiply by 3, and that gives you 18. So the limit as x approaches 5 of this expression here is equal to 18. Once you recognize that 5 is in the uh, domain of this and that, you can do it straight away from here, right? You can plug in 5 in there, that is 6, put 5 here, you have uh, square root of 9, which is 3 times 6, 18, and then you get that, all right? Okay, um, let's uh, finish off with the last one. The last one is x.
approaches negative one of this rational function. We have limit as x approaches negative one of x minus two all over x squared plus four x minus three. Okay, so you check whether negative one here is in the domain of this function. Okay, so what is important now is the denominator, right? Put negative one in here. You're gonna have negative one squared minus well plus four times negative one minus three. So this is positive one minus four minus three, which is negative six. So yes, it's not zero, right? It's not zero when you plug this in there. So it is in the domain of this function. And so that means that we can write this as the limit as x approaches negative one of x minus two all over the limit as x approaches negative one of x squared plus four x minus three, right? Okay, so this is not easy to put negative one in here. You have negative one minus two, that is negative three. If you put negative one in here, we've computed that already, you have negative six. Okay, the negatives cancel out, and so this turns out to be one over two for the limits. So the limit as x approaches negative one of this is equal to one over two. Okay, good. So these are some examples. Um, I'll do one more or two. Okay, of uh, <clears throat> some things that are a bit more tricky that you need to um, rationalize and stuff, we'll do one. Okay, so I'll be back to do another example.